Both major party gubernatorial candidates, Jared Polis and Walker Stapleton, spoke at the 2018 Energy Summit this week. Polis was heckled by three individuals during his speech. The hecklers were booed and then removed from the room. In his speech, Polis also reiterated his stance against Proposition 97, saying it would all but ban fracking in Colorado. Uh, Eric, uh, Jared Polis is in a tough situation. He, you've got to go to the summit. I, well, I guess you don't have to, but the, the political thing is sometimes you've got to take the bitter pill, take the hits, and then move forward. Uh, I'm sure this isn't the last we're going to hear about the uh, oil and natural gas industry with Jared Polis, but do we see anything from this summit that sticks down the road? I think it's just a play that's going to repeat itself throughout the campaign. Yes, Paul has chosen. It was the right decision to go to that summit. He has chosen not to go to Club 20, where similar issues would be engaged here at, at the start of September. But given that the setback issue seems to be on the ballot or headed that way, and that's going to attract so much advertising dollars, this issue is going to be front and center on voters' minds. And candidates are going to have to address it on almost a daily basis. Walker Stapleton has an easy way of handling it. He's opposed to the setbacks. He's largely, he'll be in favor of responsible regulation, but he's largely in favor of the oil and gas industry. That's his, that's his constituency. Jared Polis, on the other hand, he needs votes on both sides of the issue. He needs centrist votes who think that this is several steps too far in terms of the setback proposal, but he also needs votes off the Democratic left, the environmental community, and people who've been historically friendly with him who are in favor of this measure. So there's much more of a political challenge here to Jared Polis than to Walker Stapleton. Joey, I've made the point uh, with anyone who lives around here, which is a pretty small list, uh, but uh, when I have about that this issue right now reminds me a lot of what the personhood issue and those amendments did for Republican candidates, right. that um, you had Republican candidates that had to come out against it because of the what it would do really for law, but they still, like Eric had said, need to appeal to the base who are probably going to vote for it. Uh, it feels that Polis and probably other Democrats can be in that situation. I mean, that's why the Colorado Democratic Party came out for it. Uh, what do you think? Well, I think Jared's been alienating his base, that far left environmental base for some time. I remember this time, a little later than this time last year, they were upset with him because he wasn't articulating his renewable energy plan very well. Jared, I was there the other day, Jared had to go to that because he needs to try to keep as much of that money uh, from the oil and gas industry. Anadarko and Noble can write million dollar checks as long as he can, but he needs to keep that money on the sideline. You know, he came out against Initiative 97, which is a 2,500 foot setback, but just four years ago, he was in favor of a setback that was just 2,000 feet. And you know, the hecklers, I'm a big believer that there are no coincidences in politics. Walker Stapleton gets up and he's clearly, you know, in, in league with the oil and gas industry and nobody says anything. Polis gets up next, and then he gets booed, and these people get lit, let out, and then suddenly he looks great to these people. He's one of them. So if these were indeed genuine uh, environmental activists, they didn't help their cause. They helped the cause of Walker Stapleton. They helped the cause of Jared Polis, if they're truly against that. Wow, interesting uh, take. It's, it's great to have an a eyewitness to the situation. Uh, Natasha, this is, even if there wasn't going to be something on the ballot this year, this was going to be a big issue between oil and gas and Jared Polis and, and Walker Stapleton. But with that ballot, if, it do, if that proposal does make the ballot, it's going to be enormous. Uh, what do you expect to see down the road? Well, I think that, yes, this topic is going to dominate the the conversation in many ways. But if there's anything I've learned in covering this race so far, which seems like it's been going on for a very long time, um, is that none of these topics has, has stood out as the topic that will define the campaign. You know, I can ask uh, an expert today what the hot topics are going to be, and fracking will probably be on that list. And then I can ask tomorrow, and it'll be something completely different. The one thing that seems to be a consensus is around topics related to growth, which you can probably make an argument that most of them are related to that. But I think that's going to be the defining conversation for all for both of these candidates is how they sort of perform on that question of do you like what's happening in Colorado right now with its growth or not. And so in the ways that that relates to oil and gas and energy conversations, yes, that will be a big player. But I think today was just or this week was just a start of these conversations. I think it's going to get uh, mixed up in the rest of the topics and we're going to see a lot more conversations that are expanded beyond this issue. 
Uh, Krista, it doesn't seem to me there's any real slam dunks here. While uh, um, uh, pro proposal Proposition 97 is fairly extreme, because it would basically just wipe out fracking in Colorado, it's not like it's not going to get any sympathy. Uh, it, and I'm saying this is pure coincidence. I'm no scientist, no geologist, but you get headlines like you had this morning of a couple of earthquakes in Colorado. We're not used to seeing any earthquakes. We remember of earthquakes in Oklahoma and things like that. And it, it gets people thinking. And again, they could be completely unrelated. I am not a scientist, but that's what changes that little middle ground that's available. Uh, where do you think the Republican Party is going to be on this, seeing that we're already a state that's pretty regulated? We are, I mean, it's very, very well regulated uh, fracking. And if we want to move away from dirty coal, and coal does emit a lot of carbon dioxide, we have to move to things like natural gas. Uh, no matter what people say, you cannot run the state on just solar power and wind power. And a little dirty secret with wind power, it kills an awful lot of birds. So you can't put it everywhere. And you can't keep the hospitals lit up. You can't keep uh, houses lit up. You can't keep the state lit up if you just have uh, renewables, hydro, I guess, nuclear um, solar and wind, you got to have natural gas at the very least in the mix. And if you have 97 pass, you eliminate at least some of the Colorado product that will provide clean energy for the state going forward. I think Republicans are on the right side of the issue. I kudos to uh, Congressman Jared Polis for standing up to some of the crazies in his base. He's going to have to rethink, though, his renewable energy forever uh, platform because it just scientifically, realistically, doesn't work.